Uh, a few months ago, I pulled a muscle in my back. And if you've ever hurt your back, it is terrible. Anybody ever hurt their back? Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Worst thing, just about. It is terrible. And so it was hurting me, and I decided that what would be best for my back is I need to walk around and move because I've always heard walking is good for your back. I need to walk around and move. But for some reason, it never got any better. And so I got sick. I had uh, I got the flu, and so I was like, well, I'm going with the flu. Might as well have them look at my back, too. And so I asked him about my back, and I said, you know, I've been moving. I've been walking around. And he goes, well, you don't need to be doing that. That's the worst thing for what wrong with your back. That's the worst thing to do for what's wrong with your back. What you need to do is you need to put heat on it and rest, is what he told me to do. And so I was going, oh, well, that's why it ain't getting no better. Because I thought I am need to be moving around and loosening it up. And it just struck me of what I thought I was doing. I thought I was doing something that would bring about my back getting better and some healing. But really what I needed to do was the opposite thing. And I needed to rest. And sometimes we're that way spiritually where we can get so focused on all the problems, everything around us. And in the world today, it really tells you, hey, focus on your problems. Because if you focus on them, you can fix them, and that will bring about your peace, that will bring about healing to you. You'll feel better if you can focus and fix all your problems, all these circumstances that are going on. But really, that's not what brings about peace in our life. It's not fixing all of our problems, all our situations get better. That's not what really brings about peace in our lives. But yet the world tells us, focus on your problems, stare at your problems, get everybody else to focus on your problems as well. And we get so fixated on our problems and trying to fix them that we get less and less peace and more and more anxious and worry and fearful when we do these things instead of just coming and just giving them to Him. Like the psalm we read Take it to Him in prayer. We never seem to do that sometimes, and when we take our eyes off of Him, the peace kind of goes away as well. Instead of focusing on Him and praising Him, and not so much that our problems would be fixed, but that when we focus on Him, we know the One who can take care of all those problems. It don't have to be us that takes care of them. We can still have peace in any situation. Where Jesus said, in John 14, verse 27, Jesus said, He said, My peace I leave you. My peace I give to you. He said, I give you peace. And he would continue and say, and I don't give as the world gives. And he says, So don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And he said, I don't give as the world gives. I've come to give you peace. But how does the world give us things? It gives us things more in the spirit of fear than in peace and everything's going to be okay. It's always something about, they present it in a way to make you fearful. You watch the news. Do you come away feeling peaceful and everything's okay? I don't. If anything, they present it in a way to make you fearful, almost to make you fearful, that if you go outside, you better watch out because you're going to be in danger if you just walk outside. It's the way it's presented sometimes. Where they make you afraid, where when the weatherman gives a report of, hey, there may be a chance of snow. It may, it may snow an inch. It may just be a dusting. What do people do? We get afraid and we run a store and buy all the milk in the store. And then we're afraid that, hey, you know, the power might go out. So we got to prepare for that as well. And this year is an election year. Boy, there's a lot of fear around that too. Of who's going to get in, who's not going to get in. Everything is pushing us to be fearful and afraid of something. And we're worried and we have all this anxiousness about us. Because things are presented to us in a way of we need to be fearful. Tomorrow, there's going to be an eclipse. And there are all kinds of things of people saying about this eclipse that in a way are not pushing, hey, it's going to be okay. They're pushing, 
be afraid of these things. Which is crazy to me because I'm going to go on a rabbit trail for a minute then I'll get back. Okay? It's been bugging me this week so I have to say it. There are so many people saying about this eclipse that it's you know, it's crossing in a certain way, it's going over certain cities and all this stuff. And basically they're talking about it's about to bring upon the rapture, to bring upon end times, all these natural disasters, all you think about to happen. But they're presenting in a way for us to be fearful and afraid. Instead of when Jesus said, when you see the signs of the times, when you see these things happening, to lift your hands and rejoice because your redemption is near. Jesus didn't say be fearful of these things. It's going to be bad, but you can still have peace in it because we're, we know where we're heading. So when things are presented in fear to us, we start becoming fearful. And that's not the way we are supposed to be as Christians. We're not supposed to be fearful. But the world presents everything to us as fearfulness. And Jesus says, I don't give to you as the world does. The world pushes fear, but I come and I give you peace. I give you Rest. Peace and rest I give you. Peace, not fear. And I want to ask today, this morning, before we read in Hebrews of, are you inwardly at peace? Like, is your soul at peace? Is it at rest in knowing who God is, who Jesus is, knowing that I don't have to fear anything? Because he's with me. Is your soul that way? Are you trusting in Jesus to the point of you have this rest? Where in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 Jesus says, Come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. Come to me, I'll give you rest, I'll give you peace. And that doesn't mean that he's going to fix all of our problems. We're not going to go through some trials. We're not going to go through some terrible times. We're all going to have struggles. We're all going to have hardship. Things are going to happen in this world, but we can still have peace and rest even in the midst of all those things. All those things happen, yet we can still have peace. Because Jesus said, I've come to give you rest and peace. But how come we're always fearful of things instead of being at peace and rest? And I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of things that we fixate on and worry about are most of the time things we can't even control. That's the things I tend to worry about more than anything else. It's things that I have no control over, but yet I worry about. To the point of it starts getting anxious and I start getting fearful. To the point of I have to remind myself, hey, I'm not supposed to be in this state of fear. That's when i got to come and bring it before God. Of I'm trusting you to take care of everything. And John 10, and John 10 is where Jesus says about the thief who is Satan, and he contrasts himself with Satan there, where he says, The thief Satan has come to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come so that you may have life and have it abundantly. Where he's saying that Satan has come to destroy you. He's coming to make you fearful, to make you worry, to make you anxious about these things. But Jesus says, I've come to give you life so that you're not fearful, but you can have this inner peace about you, peace in your spirit. And right before that is whenever Jesus says that I am the good shepherd. That's a good passage, isn't it? I am the good shepherd. And he says that the, he explains how the good shepherd is one who lays down his life for his sheep. I am the good shepherd. Don't worry about these things. I've laid down my life for you. But he says there's another who's coming to steal, kill, and destroy. He's coming to try and take away your peace. And I love that about Jesus is the good shepherd because in Psalm 23... It talks about how the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why is that? Why do we not want? What does he do as the shepherd? It says he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He even goes as far to say as he prepares a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies. It's this picture of the good shepherd brings about this peace and rest about us. Where he says, even if I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. No evil. Because he's with me. That should give us comfort during these times. When there's troubling times, we don't have to fear, but we have peace where he even prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. My enemies are watching me be at peace and rest while he's taking care of me. But the thief is trying to take away that peace and rest and get us fearful. So I want to ask again of, how are you with that peace? Is that something that you're known for, is to be a person of in these situations, you can be at peace? Because really in the Bible, when you read these stories about people in the Bible, that was one thing that they were kind of known for. Of they had peace in these situations. There were peace in every circumstance. For you have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who they were told to bow down before the statue of the king, or they're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace. And what do they tell them when they say, bow down, you're going to be thrown into the fiery furnace? They said, our God is able to deliver us from this. But even if he doesn't, I want you to know that we will not bow down before any other God but the one true God. In a way, they were saying they had peace about it, of saying, our God can deliver us from this, but even if he doesn't, we're going to be okay. Because we know where we're heading, we're going to be with him forever. There was still a peace about it, even in the midst of all those things. Of we know that he can deliver us, but even if he doesn't, I'm going to be okay. I'm still going to have peace about it. And so now in Hebrews chapter 4, I want to read these few verses, and I want you to just kind of listen about what he's saying here. He's talking about the Israelites when they were out in the desert, as they were coming into the promised land. He's talking about them, and they were disobedient, so they didn't get to go in. And he says in verse 1, he says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands. Let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the good news proclaimed to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value because they did not share the faith of those who obeyed. Now we who have believed enter that rest just as God said, so I declared on oath in my anger, they shall not enter my rest. And so, in chapter 3, right before that, he's talking about them wandering around in the desert. Where Moses had brought them out of Egypt, he parted the Red Sea, they saw these things, and they sent out these spies into the land. And they send out 12 spies, 10 of them come back and go, this is a great land. But them people over there, they look pretty big. There's some giants over there. And we don't think that we can take them. They were fearful. But the two came back. Joshua and Caleb came back. And they said, yeah, they're, they're right. They look really big over there. And physically, we don't match up. But God is with us. God has told us he's going to give us this promised land. God is with us. They had peace about it, knowing what they were going to face. There was still this peace about it. There was no fear. They were just like, look, God has parted the Red Sea. He brought us out of that slavery. He's going to deliver them into our hands. He's promised this to us. We don't need to be fearful of these things. But yet the people listened to the ten who were fearful than the two who believed that they could do it. And so God says... They are not going to enter into that promised land because of their disbelief and their disobedience. Because they did not go forward. They didn't believe and they didn't obey what the Lord said. And he even goes as far in verse 18 of chapter 3 that God says, I swear that they will not enter into my rest. I will, they will not enter into my rest. 
And so in chapter 4, he's telling us that we need to be careful that none of us fall short. That's what he says in verse 1. Be careful that none of you be found falling short of this rest. And he's talking about not just them being out in the desert. He's talking about their... They missed out on this promised land, this place of rest for them because of their disbelief and their disobedience. They saw the giants and were afraid and fearful. Even though God they, God, they, God said He would fight for them. And so He's saying to us, we don't need to miss out on our promised place of rest because we're fearful of these things and because of our disbelief. Because our disbelief will bring about the fear and the anxiousness and the worry. When we're fearful of these things. He's talking about a very deeper place of rest than just entering into a promised land. And later on, in that chapter, in chapter 4, in verse 7, he's quoting from Psalm 95, where he says, If you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. But listen to what he says. Don't harden your heart. And in Psalm 95, it's also talking about how the Israelites refused to listen and they were disbelieving and so they didn't get to go to that place of rest and to the promised land. And today we need to be careful that we don't harden our hearts and disbelieve and not enter into that rest. Because that rest is what He has given us. And... The Sabbath was supposed to be a day of rest. Where you know God worked six days on the seventh, he rested. He didn't rest because he was tired, he rested because why? He was finished. He had finished the work he had done for us. It was finished. And then we get to the New Testament, to Jesus, and the cross. Jesus is up there and he says, It is finished. What was finished? Everything that had to be done for us to be saved for our salvation, to, for the forgiveness of sin. So in a way, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. We were by nature objects of God's wrath. Where we, were, we have all sinned against God and heading to His judgment. That is not a place of peace or rest to be in. To be in a place of where you're getting ready to Take on God's wrath. It's not a piece of pe place of peace or rest. There's no peace there. But because of what Jesus did on the cross, He said it was finished, that now He's brought us into this peace, this place of reconciliation with God where we can have this rest and this peace. Because we no longer have to be in fear of God's wrath because we believe in Him. There should be a peace and rest about that. He's brought that about us where we've been forgiven and cleansed of our sins. Where once we were objects of His wrath, we're now objects of grace. That's what Paul tells us. Where He's brought us from being dead to being alive in Christ. We can have peace and assurance in this. In knowing these things. Where we don't have to be fearful of these things. But if we don't believe, and we have unbelief, then we're just like those people in the desert. Just like those people in the desert who were looking around at the giants and were fearful, and they didn't get to enter into the promised land. In the same way, we can't enter this place of peace and rest with God until we truly grasp what happened on the cross. Because that brings about peace and rest in our life because we don't have to worry about all these things because He's been taking care of it. But yet sometimes our disbelief comes from we look at our past and go well, is he really going to forgive all those things that I did? Like I know what I did. Is he really going to forgive all of them? Like what he did on the cross does it really wipe away every sin? Sometimes we can be not truly believing that and almost going well now I've got to do something about it. You know I did this, so does that mean I've taken care of these sins? Have I made up for what I did? Instead of believing in what Jesus has done on the cross, we can come and 
almost go, we hope it's true, but we're not for sure, so we're not putting all of our hope in it, to a place where we can't have peace and rest because we're almost going, well, am I really forgiven or not? Instead of knowing that we have an assurance that we have been forgiven of all those who believe and trust in Jesus have been forgiven. That's a place of peace and rest that we can have there. But not only that, but we can also come and not have peace because we're fearful of something. Where we're not trusting in God to take care of us, so there's no peace there when we don't trust in Him. There's only fear and anxiousness. Because we're not trusting in God. And one of the fruits of the Spirit is what? It's peace. It's the love, the joy, and the peace. That's the first three. It's peace. That we're supposed to be people of peace in these things. We don't have fear and we don't worry. Yet, we run around and we're afraid of many things. We're... I mean, we can have all kinds of fears of we're afraid of losing our job. We're afraid of losing our help. We're afraid of losing money. We're afraid of where the world's headed. We don't, we're fearful of tomorrow. We can be fearful of all these different things and even have to the point of we're fearful of death and dying. We can be fearful of that. And when we're fearful of those things, we don't have peace because it's that unbelief and disobedience sometimes. If we're not truly trusting in Him to take care of these things. And um, there's a story that I was reminded of this week about John Wesley. John Wesley was a great man of God. John Wesley was preaching to people. He was in the streets pre preaching to people. He was doing all these things. He, he even study to learn to where he could read the Bible in Greek and Hebrew. That's pretty impressive. But he was a great man of God. And in the 1700s, he boarded a ship that was sailing across to America. He was going to Georgia to preach to those who had settled and colonized there. And as they were on their trip over there, a big storm came up. So much that Wesley writes that the storm was so bad that it broke the mainsail and the boat was taking on water. So they were all screaming in terror, Wesley included, of fear of their lives, that they were going to die. Because Wesley at that point, he was preaching, but he writes how he was still fearful of death. Like he was still afraid to die. And so with that ship seemingly going down, he was so terrified. But he noticed another group of missionaries that had been going with them called the Moravians. There was this group of missionaries from Germany that went with them. And he noticed that all the England people were screaming in terror, but these German Moravians, they were at peace. They were calm. They were singing praises to God while the storm was going on. And so the storm passed, and Wesley asked them, were you not afraid when the storm was going on? And they said, no, we're not afraid. We're not afraid to die. We have no fear of death in us. We're not afraid to die. So they had this peace about them that Wesley noticed was different from him. And he made this statement. He says, I went to America to convert the Native Americans but who shall convert me? Yet how can I preach about faith that I do not have? Where he was realizing that there was something not right in his life about his faith because he didn't have that peace that they had during this storm that came up. Where he was preaching, he was preaching in the streets, he was studying the Bible. He was doing everything you would think a man of God would do, a godly man would do. Yet inwardly, he didn't have any peace. He was still fearful. He was not trusting in God and believing that even in death, that God would take care of him. But eventually, he did come to that peace about it. 
and that fear of death, but he realized that because that fear was there, there was no peace, that there was something not right in his relationship with God. There was something not right in his relationship with God there because there was no peace. That he saw in the other men having peace, yet he himself didn't have that peace. And I just think about that storm and that ship of there are people screaming over here and there are people over here calm and praising God. And how different that would look. So again, do you have that inward peace about you in your spirit? Or are we fearful? Because we're supposed to be people who are different from the world. The world runs in fear. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like them. We're supposed to come to a place where we can have peace about us. Where we know that we've been forgiven. And we know that one day he's coming back and he's going to take us to be with him. And that we're not living for this world because all this is going to pass away. Like, do you really believe those things? Of, do you really believe that one day we're going to shed these bodies and our spirits are going to go to him? To be with him forever. In this place he's talked about. So here on the earth now, I should be people that have peace because he's the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The good shepherd, even though I go through trials and hardship, I can have peace because my shepherd is with me. Psalm 23, his rod is staff, it comforts me. Where he tells us, Jesus tells us, if I seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, then he'll give me all these other things. That I'll have food, I'll have clothes. I'll have water. He'll take care of all these things. I don't have to worry and be anxious and fearful. I can just be at a piece of, place of peace and rest with Him, knowing He's going to take care of everything. But do we really ever have that type of peace? Because sometimes that peace, we don't have it because we're so fixated on the problems or different things of life. For the cares of this life can we can get entangled with tangled with and we don't have that peace about it. But I want us to have that peace. And the two things that are mentioned about the Israelites was their unbelief and their disobedience. And those are the two biggest things for us today too, is our disbelief and our disobedience. Where we don't truly believe that God's going to take care of us. Or we're being disobedient. Man, there's still sin in our life that we need to get out. That we need to get rid of. Because we can't have any peace if we're sinning against God. That's the whole point of the Holy Spirit. To convict us of those things. Showing us and telling us we're not doing right. And that's why in there he says, Today, if you have heard his voice, do not harden your heart. Because if you harden it, each time you harden it, it gets callous to where when the Holy Spirit convicts it's not really there anymore and we just continue in the sin without the conviction but today do we have peace or has our unbelief and not trusting in him led us to this state of fear and anxiousness and worry about things or has our disbelief or has our disobedience and our sin caused us to not have that peace? I want us all to be at peace and not be fearful of these things. Because we are living in a very troublesome time. Especially here in this country. Where things are starting to look not very good. Not looking good in every aspect it seems. But yet, we don't need to be in fear because we know the one who's in control of all of that. Do we really believe that God is in control of everything? That God knows who's going to win this next election. And I don't need to be fearful about it. I know who I want in. That doesn't mean i got to be fearful about it. If it doesn't happen. Because God's going to take care of me. 
Don't let the enemy come and steal the peace that God wants us to have and that assurance. We have to trust in our good shepherd that he'll take us by the green pastures and lead us by the still water. Or even in the times of trouble, he'll set a table before me where I can eat and rest even in the midst of all these troubles. Do we really have that kind of faith, though? If we don't really have that peace and that type of faith, then something's not really right with our relationship with God. And I want to pray today that we would have that type of peace because there are times where sometimes I am fearful. That's natural for us to be fearful. It's not bad when we're fearful. It's just sometimes we need to recognize, hey, I need to give whatever I'm being fearful of to God and not let me hold on to it and just give it to Him. And come to that place of peace where when you're at that place of peace and rest because you know Him and love Him, there's a great love that's there too. Of you can feel that love knowing how much you've been forgiven and you can feel that love in knowing that I'm at rest because He so loves me. That I'm no longer this object of wrath. I'm a child of grace. I'm this person. I'm this child of God who loves me. And that should change us to where we do something about it too. In the Sunday school lesson, it was faith in the works. Faith without deeds, faith without works is dead. There should be something to come alongside our faith. How we can't see someone in need and tell them, go in peace, I hope it goes well with you, and not do anything to help in that way. Do we have peace? Because Jesus says, I have come to give you peace and rest. Because he did everything for us on the cross. We don't have to be fearful of these things. So I want to pray this morning. And as we're leading into revival, I want you to be mindful of that. Of do I really have peace and that assurance or not? Do I really have peace? And you know, there are many things that can come in this life. There's many things that we are going to face, but we can have peace. Even though outwardly everything <laughs> seems like it might be falling down, but inwardly we can have peace. Because we know that all these things are just temporary. We're heading to a place where it's eternal and everything's going to be there. So like I'm, we worry about things down here where it's like, I need to be looking over there. We're over here worried about you know what kind of car we're going to drive, what kind of house we'll buy, all these luxuries. And we get worried about those things instead of, I'm going over there. All that stuff is just going to burn up one day. So I want to pray this morning about our peace. That we would not be people of fear, but we would be people that have peace. So let's pray this morning. Lord, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, later on in that chapter, in chapter 4 of Hebrews, it talks about how your word is living, it's active, sharper than a double-edged sword, pierces between the joints and the marrow, dividing soul and spirit. Lord, I pray that when we read your word, that those things, that your word would penetrate us to the point where we would change, it would do something, you would convict us about these things. But Lord, I pray that you would just give us all peace and rest. Lord, we all long for that, to have peace in every situation. But Lord, so often we're fearful and anxious and help us to, Lord, remind us how when we feel that way, we need to come to you and give it to you. That we don't have to be burdened and heavy laden. That we bring it to you and you give us rest. That you give us peace. Lord, we want that. We don't want to be worried about these things of 
how much money we have, or paying the bills, or what food we're going to eat. Help us not to be worried about those things, but have peace knowing that you're going to take care of them. That you'll provide for all my needs. I just need to seek first you and your kingdom. You promise you'll give me these things. So Lord, I pray that we would not have this disbelief, this unbelief about us to where we don't have peace. Lord, I pray that the enemy wouldn't come in and steal our peace, that we would not be people of fear, but we'd be people of peace. Where you said, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. Help us to be these people of peace. Help us to be, that's what we're known for. Where if something happens and everything is falling apart, people will look at us and go, how can you be calm during this? It's because we have that peace of God about us. So Lord, we just ask that you would give us that peace. And as we leave here, we want to just be mindful of that, but also be mindful of the revival that's, going, that's coming this week. That you would speak to us, that you would pour out your wisdom and your spirit into Casey to speak to us this week. Lord, give us something that's not just in one ear and out the other, but it gets in us and it changes us. And so, Lord, we're going to give you all the honor, glory, and praise for everything that's happened this week. Because, Lord, you alone are worthy to be praised. And so we thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for what you did on the cross so we can have that peace and that rest. And so, Lord, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.